Hey, common stack folks, John Ellison here from Refi Dow. Wanted to fill the video as requested for our final nomination. I'm gonna go and do a quick recap of our submission and then dive into the final round questions. So we are a community unified by one mission of accelerating impact for people and the planet. We feel that the Commons application would be best suited to realize three public goods, which effectively iterate upon the primitives designed in the token engineering Commons and by the community as a whole. The Refi ID is a kind of permissionless version of the Trusted Seed membership, which allows people to commit a voluntary tax to the mission-driven community of which they're a part. In this case, it's the Refi DAO, but it could be leveraged for anything. And this is for individuals, organizations, and network validators. This revenue stream is paramount and effectively makes a DAO like a nation state. The second primitive is impact gauges, which are effectively conviction voting driven augmenting bonding curves that determine the issuance of the community's uh, currency, in this case, the refi token. In this case, ID holders can propose specific gauges, um, which will incentivize on-chain actions, and others can place conviction votes of refi tokens on those gauges to determine which on-chain activities should um, be incentivized and allow people to earn refi tokens by an impact score. Um, this is a really interesting primitive that I could go into greater detail for, um, but I do think it's a great iteration upon what you guys have already done and ultimately allows us to feedback the um, on the ground real world impact into these gauges in biweekly intervals to be able to determine what's actually making a difference. The third primitive is this impact explorer, which is like a visualization for this DAO nation that is um, trying to fulfill this shared purpose. You can imagine this explorer um, being able to show the economic relationships between the different ID holders in the system and the different uh, allow listed tokens that are trying to be accrued by the treasury and also the impact of the impact gauges in terms of allocating capital towards specific areas and specific entities. In the case of um, a kind of grassroots economic style, you could see how incentivizing universal basic income on the ground actually results in new wallets being created. And you could allow people to create comments on wallet addresses, contract addresses, and even transactions to be able to have really meaningful conversations and create a whole new level of um, transparency and monitoring on top of the network. The three pillars of ReFi are all about stabilizing the climate, restoring ecosystems, and instituting justice uh, with communities of care. And as you see, this is a kind of great umbrella for all of the existing applicants um, at this final stage. The final round questions we'll go through and talk about the team and stakeholders. Um, we've got an incredible team who have committed their time over the next nine months. Uh, Daryl Edwards has been the heart and soul of the Refi DAO movement so far, meeting with almost half of the Refi founders in the space. He's spoken to over 100 founders and runs regular Refi founder circles. Paula Palermo, um, formerly at Let's Invert, co-founder of Impacta, also at Techstars. Darren Zal, who um, we merged our application as a part of this process, thanks to Osama as a token engineer at Longtail Financial. Rafael Romano, co-founder of pa uh, Paolo Palermo, as an anthropologist, economist, and incredible impact steward. And myself, um, formerly a head of growth at Toucan. Um, I'm full time on this. I you know, left a, a cushy job. I'm fully committed. All of these people are fully committed. I'm in this for the long run. We're all here to stay. Whether we get this prize or not, we're going to make this come to life. And it'd be awesome to see us join together with the Common Stack community. Uh, we've got a handful of awesome advisors and friends who are offering help in various capacities at uh, leading refi protocols across the movement. Super grateful for these people's help and generosity in their time. Uh, the stakeholders, we've got this whole network of uh, over 217 projects experimenting at the intersection of climate and crypto. We've got future generations and a picture of my kids because this is a huge reason why I'm here and I feel like so many people in ReFi, we see the challenges of our time and want to invest in their future. And of course, all of life on Earth as we begin to realize that we are not separate from life, we are not separate from the planet, we are a part of it. We are in this integral dance as one species, uh, like a beehive surrounded by uh, a mission of love. The ecosystem around us is vibrant and you know, stretches across network validators, individual members, um, and kind of core protocols that are part of this movement. 
Uh, we were super excited to dive into the deployment of the Token Engineering Commons. Thank you so much for asking these questions and giving us a chance to learn more. There were quite a few things that stood out to us. Firstly was the kind of two-phase process and the initial starting point of focusing on the cultural build, instilling a community of values and specifying the key behaviors that make this uh, mission-driven community a success and then creating a very structured process to um, experiment with the different parameters that will ultimately form this local economy and determine its success. Um, you know, encapsulating that in a hatch and shifting to a second phase, it's been so interesting to see how many people in my network are um, yeah, trusted seed members and are deeply committed to this. What you guys have done has obviously worked. Uh, the question for me on the last end, which is like, what could have been done better? I wasn't involved in the process, but in my reading and speaking to other members, I feel as though um, we could have focused possibly more on kind of multidisciplinary collaboration and bringing people into this space that weren't already and using that kind of diverse um, design thinking at the fringes to design a better system for all. And in this case, it kind of leads to the question around non-Web3 stakeholders, which I feel is a really strong aspect of our vision and our execution. Uh, there are loads of people in the climate space outside of Web3 who don't get this movement and its potential. We're about to announce a uh, eight-week refi fellowship with ClimateBase, the world's largest um, climate job directory site and onboarding platform. And we're in conversations with several other um, climate tech job sites and education networks and also on the ground climate political activists who could use the power of Web3 to coordinate capital and resources on the ground to push political levers to make a real impact. So I think this is a really fundamental difference. We are very much looking outside the Web3 space and creating structured on-ramps through ReFi fellowships to bring people into this movement and make sure that we're having an actual impact on the ground in the soil, in our local governments, and effectively in the atmosphere, because that's where we need it. <clears throat> We're also onboarding stakeholders from frontier communities through ReFi Spring events, with a real deep focus in the communities in Brazil and some fledgling opportunities in Kenya with people who've come out of the kind of Shamba Protocol network, which is a data, geospatial data oracle that's part of ReFi DAO. And this event series was also um, yeah, great to see uh, Richard from um, Precious Plastics a part of. We really feel like this is a, a core part of building this movement and making this commons a success. We've got to reach far and wide and have local chapters of people meeting in the flesh to discuss this stuff and be a part of the hatch and make sure that we have a diverse group of stakeholders um, who are committed to make a difference. Uh, looking at the question around culture and Eleanor Ostrom's eight principles for governing the commons, uh, yeah, Eleanor Ostrom's work is a core part of the refi um, canon, so to speak, as are a handful of others. I'm more personally well versed in Charles Eisenstein's work and in Marshall Rosenberg's around nonviolent communication, but there are a few in our team who go very deep into Ostrom's work and um, a lot of these have come together to form our own guiding principles, which are um, not you know, identical to Ostrom's, but are closely adjacent and aligned. And also some of the mental models that we use to understand how we are driven by our mission, vision, and values, and the tools that we use to realize this. The question you asked around which chain would we use, any reason not to use Gnosis chain? I don't have a deep exploration into the technical considerations of this chain, but we um, would want to do a more thorough investigation before making a commitment. We'd love for this movement to be multi-chain. If it starts first on Gnosis, we'd love to also see it move to Celo and Polygon and Cosmos. We've got a lot of refi activity happening there. And just to uh, yeah, pause and recap before the 10 minute mark, refi really is the umbrella that brings all of our aspirations for these finalists together. This is all about coordinating on-chain behaviors that result in real-world planet-positive impact across our climate, our ecosystems, and our society as a whole. We would be so honored to receive your vote and build this together. And if not, thank you for taking the time to see what we're up to, and we can't wait to participate in whoever wins this awesome prize. Thanks for your time, and peace be with you. Join the movement. It's happening at an event near you. Peace.